Hello there and welcome. This is Mihail or Michael speaking. And as always, before I start this video, I want to say thank you all who decided to support me financially, be it through PayPal, Patreon or Super Thanks. Thank you friends and have a great day. Maybe you have noticed that I've been missing for about four days. Unfortunately, I got sick and I was unable to do videos these four days. So I have a lot of catching up to do. And let's start with two most active front lines. It is Liman Direction and Bakhmut. First, let's start with Liman Direction. There were a lot of developments by the Russian forces here in this sector. They were able to significantly advance on this front line. And this is the territories they were able to capture in the last few days. Now, it does look quite significant as you can see. All throughout these few days, Russians were continuously assaulting Ukrainian positions within this sector. And day by day, were capturing more and more Ukrainian strongholds, advancing deeper into Ukrainian defensive lines. As you can see currently, they came very close to the settlement of Novogorovka, and reports are coming in that the fighting for it is ongoing. Then recent news suggests that Russians were able to advance slightly here on this front line to the northwest of settlement of Sergeyevka and capture about this much territory, threatening Ukrainian positions within the settlement of Sergeyevka and advancing in the direction of the settlement of Nadia. It would seem Ukrainians understood in what kind of situation they can end up in few hours and retreated from the settlement of Sergeyevka. At this point in time, a lot of sources are claiming that Sergeyevka is under Russian control. Obviously, with the capture of the settlement of Nadia, Ukrainians would have much harder time withdrawing their troops from Sergeyevka, because as you can see, it would end up in a operational encirclement. With the fall of Sergeyevka and perhaps fall of Nadia and Novogorovka, we can expect Russians to advance and capture about this much territory with the settlement and territories that surrounds it. All Ukrainian counterattacks in attempt to stop this Russian progress were unsuccessful and Russians continue to advance here on this sector, making this front line one of the most active battlefields in this war currently. The fighting here continues as I speak. Then let's move to the Liman front line. Here Ukrainians were mostly on the counterattack in attempt to stop Russian advancements in the direction of Zarichne and Torske. Then there were also Russian counterattacks as well in attempt to advance within the Serebryansky forest as well as here from Dibrova and in the attempt to widen this bridgehead. As of right now, we only know of a relative Russian success here to the south of Dibrova, where they were able to advance and capture some Ukrainian strongholds within the Serebryansky forest. Generally, fighting in this sector continues with heavy artillery duels and counter battery activities. Then, from here, let's quickly visit Kupiansk frontline. In the last few days, Russians were continuously assaulting Ukrainian positions within this forest area as well as in the direction of the settlement of Sinikivka. It would seem that after many of these kind of attacks, Russians were able to penetrate Ukrainian defensive line here in the sector and advance slightly in the direction of the settlement of Sinikivka. Now, before we move to Bakhmut front line, it is interesting to point out some observations. If you remember about a week ago, Russians were extremely successful advancing in the direction of Torsky. They even reached the outskirts of the settlement as well as advance from Dibrova and in the Serebryansky forest itself. This in turn triggered chain of events in which Ukrainians were forced to heavily reinforce this front line in attempt to stop this Russian offensive. At this point in time, Ukrainians were successful, but this came at a price. As Ukrainians were preoccupied with the Liman front line, Russians launched a surprise assault here. And the results that we are witnessing shows that Ukrainians were not ready for the Russian assault here in this sector. As you can see, Russians were able to penetrate Ukrainian defensive lines several kilometers deep. There are reports that Ukrainians are attempting to reinforce this front line as fast as possible. However, there are only talks about it and it is unclear when Ukrainians will be able to effectively stop this Russian offensive. So, do you think this is a precursor to a new Russian summer slash fall offensive? In a sense that this is where they're going to concentrate their main push? Or this is a diversion and Russians will 
attack elsewhere. It would be interesting to know your opinion, so please leave it in the comment section. Then from here let's move to Bakhmut city where situation was also developing. First let's touch the situation on the northern flank of Bakhmut. There were several attempts of Ukrainian forces to attack along the E-40 highway. From Arikhovo Vasilivka in the direction of Dubovo Vasilivka, relative success was reported here near E-40 highway. There are also reports of yet another unsuccessful Ukrainian attacks in the direction of Birhivka and Yagodne. And in the city of Bakhmut itself, Ukrainians had some relative success advancing within this dacha area and capturing a small portion of territories in the outskirts of Bakhmut. Now let's move to the hottest spot on the Bakhmut front line, which is Klishevka and settlement of Andreevka. All these days while I was missing, Ukrainians were continuously assaulting Russian positions in front of the settlement of Klishevka. These assaults were semi-successful at some point, at some point they were a complete failure and occasionally Ukrainian forces were able to advance. As a result of these kind of attacks, Ukrainians were able to advance in the direction of Avdeevka and as some reports suggest initiate fighting for the settlement and enter the settlement of Klishevka as well, well at least its outskirts. Now there are more confirmations that Russians have now completely lost this tactical height with this trench line network which was very important for the defense of Klishevka which of course allowed Ukrainians more successfully attack in the direction of Klishevka and now they are fighting within the outskirts. Here is the video of Russian artillery shelling Ukrainian forces on the outskirts of Klishevka. It is happening here in this sector. Generally, Russian sources report of a extremely difficult situation that is developing for them. They also note a lack of air support, which puts Russians at a disadvantage. It is somewhat early to speak of a Klishev settlement being captured by the Ukrainians as well as Andreevka. Both of these settlements are still under Russian control. Ukrainian attack in the direction of Andreevka, however, makes a lot of sense. If we zoom in, we can see that there is a road system that leads from better fortified Kurdumovka to Andreevka and from Andreevka to Klishevka. Russians have used these settlements as supply hubs and these roads to supply Russian troops around Klishevka and within Klishevka settlement itself. With fighting now happening within settlement of Andreevka and in the very close proximity of Kurdumovka, this supply chain is obviously cut. Perhaps this is why we see this Ukrainian advancements here in this sector. Russians are undersupplied here in this sector not only due to the fact that Ukrainian assaults cut Russian supply, but due to the intensity of fighting. Then from here let's visit the Zaporozhian front line. First it is important to know that there were Ukrainian attempts at advancing in the direction of Mikolska and Pavlivka. These assaults were unsuccessful. Ukrainian columns ran into a minefield took some losses and were forced to step back. Then there is a situation on the Vremivka tactical bridgehead. Despite Ukrainians continuously assaulting Russian positions all across this bridgehead, Russians were successful here as well. They were able to successfully advance here across this open fields and recapture positions in between settlements of Priyutne and Staromayorsky. You can see now the front line is even, which for the Russians is more convenient. Ukrainians were assaulting Russian positions in the settlement of Priyutne as well as advancing from Novodarivka and Rivnopol. These attacks were unsuccessful. There were also attempts at attacking in the direction of Staromayorsky. At some point they were able to enter the settlement. But Russians quickly reinforced the front line, counter-attacked and forced Ukrainians to step back. Ukrainian assaults in the direction of Urajaina also failed. Then from Vremivka tactical bridgehead let's move to the Arikhi front line. Now there were some developments here in this front line as well. It would seem that Ukrainians were able to successfully push Russians out of this small sector here. As you can see yet again they continued to smash in one specific place. However the situation for the Ukrainians is not looking better because Russians retreated to a more suitable positions to be more precise on the tactical heights that serves as a natural defensive line for Robotina settlement. As I am in the middle of recording this video, reports of Russian counter-attack here are coming in. There is even a video that shows Russian soldiers walking around a recently captured trench line with 
a lot of Ukrainian deceased soldiers in it. So we can say that there is a relative success here in this sector. And perhaps as I speak and as you watch this video, Russians had already successfully recaptured recently lost positions. And at last, let's visit the settlement of Piatihatki. It would seem that Ukrainians decided to change their approach when attacking in this sector. Usually they use settlement of Piatihatki and Lopkove as a staging point. Then they advance along the roads with their armor and with their infantry within the force lines and attack in the direction of the settlement of Zheribyanki. Month of this tactic brought nothing to Ukrainian forces but immeasurable loss, mostly in human life. This is mostly due to the fact that Ukrainians started to use their armor more cautiously, which resulted in a heavy loss of infantry. The new approach came in the fact that Ukrainians abandoned the idea of attacking towards Zheripyanki directly and started attacking to its flank. So there were reported Ukrainian attacks to the east of Zheribyanki as well as to the northwest in attempt to force Russians out of their positions that are located on the tactical heights. At some point Ukrainians were successful in this endeavor and penetrated Russian defensive lines in this sector. However, Russians quickly counterattacked and negated this Ukrainian success. In any way, this is the end of the video. Again, I apologize for missing so many days. Unfortunately, again, my health was on decline. Now I'm feeling much better and I think videos will continue to be posted regularly. Well, at least I'll try. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please consider supporting it with a like, comment and a subscription. These actions not only help promote my video to a wider audience, thus spreading the message, but also motivates me to work harder and better. Thank you in advance. As always, humanity calls me to condemn all violence against human beings. Have a good day and always remember. Russia will be free and great.